Hi guys, Nash here. Today we're going to be talking about fat loss. So um, I get a lot of questions uh, from people asking me which type of cardio is the best for fat loss. Is it uh, long steady cardio, low intensity one, or maybe the high intensity cardio uh, as known as high intensity interval training. Now before we get into that uh, best activity for fat loss, we need to look first into the physiology of of uh, fat storage and fat loss. So how do we, in the first place, how do we store fat? So body fat or adipose tissue uh, is basically made of uh, molecules called uh, uh, triglycerides. So triglyceride is a molecule which is made of uh, one molecule of glycerol as a backbone and then you have three molecules of fatty acids or three carbon molecules attached to it. So this is the, this is how the, how the molecule of uh, triglyceride looks like. So we have one, glycer one glycerol and three fatty acids. So in order now to, to burn fat, we need to break down this uh, triglyceride molecule, your molecule, and free those three fatty acids into the bloodstream, where, where they can be used as energy, okay? Now, <clears throat> how do we do that? I mean, for that, obviously, there is a procedure involved in that. Uh, people often talk about, oh, you just reduce the calories, 500 a day, that will get you uh, one pound of body fat off per week, etc., etc. But not necessarily, not necessarily. What you need to understand is that you need to actually, in order to burn body fat, to burn body fat, not necessarily to start to burn body fat, you need to produce certain hormones. Now, there are two, when it comes to fat loss, we need to pay attention to two different types of hormones, right? One type is directly related to storing fat, and the second type of hormones is related to burning fat. Now, while, while insulin is the storing, is an anabolic hormone, obviously, but is a storing hormone, there is another hormone in the body which is called glucagon, which is fat breaking hormone. So now I'm gonna explain the mechanism of these two hormones and how they work. Actually, we're gonna focus more on fat burning hormones in this video and I will I will uh, create another video in which I'm going to talk about fat accumulation which will directly be related to insulin. So let's now have a look how how uh, glucagon causes fat burn or fat loss. Now in order in order to produce hormones which are responsible for fat loss we need to uh, get involved into an activity which will raise certain type of hormones. That activity is high intensity activity. So for example, if you do high intensity cardio, which means that you are doing a sprint on a bike or sprint outside or do wing gates, all kind of different activities which will really put your heartbeats up almost to the max, you will be producing a lot of uh, adrenaline and uh, ketocalamins. So these hormones will be responsible for fat loss. So how do they do that? Now there is an enzyme which is responsible for directly for breaking down triglycerides into fatty acids. That enzyme is sensitive to hormones, obviously sensitive to adrenalines, ketocalamins, and also growth hormone. And that enzyme is called hormone sensitive lipase. So that enzyme basically gets onto the fat cell on the triglyceride molecule and literally unlocks that molecule and allows those three fatty acids to get off the bad backbone of glycerol. Now fatty acids are going to be released into the bloodstream, right? So is that the end of the story? No, it's not. Why? Because when those fatty acids get released into your bloodstream, they should be used. If they are not used, they will go back and they will be restored again into the fat cell. Because fat, fatty acids are capable of doing that. So now, what would be the best thing to do? The best thing to do would be, after you perform, let's say, your six, seven, maybe 10 sprints or high, high 
uh, speed, high intensity rounds on your on your stationary bike, which will be probably around anywhere between 20, 30, not more than 60 seconds, because you have to keep that intensity in order to to bring your heartbeats and your adrenaline high. Uh, you you will need to. Uh, do that in order to release fatty acids into the bloodstream. So once the fatty acids are free and floating in the bloodstream, the best thing to do would be to perform certain card, a type of steady cardio, maybe for next 20 or 30 minutes. So just uh, rather, mo even even not moderate, maybe lower than in intensity than moderate moderate state cardio, because you really need to use the activity which will which will demand for energy those fatty acids. If you go for after those, let's say, 10 sprints, if you go for some medium intensity uh, steady cardio, you will be burning actually more glycogen, glucose from your blood, not necessarily fatty acids. So you have to perform something which will actually bring those fatty acids up as the only choice, energy choice for the body. So if you put that together, you do uh, your sprints, your high intensity interval bits, and then you follow with uh, maybe 20 to 30 minutes low intensity steady type cardio, that will be the best combination of those two cardio activities which may bring you to maximum fat loss. Now, there is another thing that you have to pay attention to, and this is actually uh, which hormone is the one that will stop lipolysis. Because there is a hormone which will stop you literally burning body fat this is insulin so the problem with that is that when insulin is high you won't be producing uh, or, or rising up the, the levels of that important enzyme which is called hormone sensitive lipase insulin triggers another one another enzyme which does the opposite it locks the fat cells but allows fatty acids to come inside so just simply, insulin allows fatty, uh, fatty, fat molecules, uh, triglycerides to to grow, but with with suppress hormone sensitive lipase and will stop physiologically, will stop the process of fat burn. So how do you, if your insulin is high, obviously, how do you prevent that? Obviously, you prevent it by avoiding eating anything before, especially carbs, carbohydrates, before your cardio session. So the best time to perform this, it is uh, physiologically either first thing in the morning on an empty stomach when you will be inclined to produce more adrenaline on ketocalamines or during the day, if you don't have time to do it first thing in the morning, you must have the meal at least three hours before your uh, high intensity interval cardio. Otherwise, and that meal should be carb free. So let's say you have some fish and uh, some French beans or maybe some chicken and, and broccoli, stuff like that. Very low in carbs, almost no carbs and protein. So that will keep your insulin down, which will rise the glucagon up and will trigger all this set of hormones which are necessary for fat loss. So uh, I believe you understand the physiology behind fat loss procedure. Now, if you don't follow this, it, it simply is not going to happen. I mean, we can, we can have uh, preferences in training, we can have different opinions or our own opinions, as a lot of people do. The question is, uh, can we have our own facts? And we cannot. So what I've tried to explain to you now is, if you need to do cardio, which is the best type of cardio to do? And definitely it comes to be the combination between high intensity cardio and low, st low intensity steady cardio, which follows straight after. The reasons I explained, first, it causes like policies with high intensity cardio, like bringing uh, your adrenaline high and, and obviously stimulating the body to produce um, uh, hormone sensitive lipase. Once the fatty acids are free in the bloodstream, with the low steady cardio, low intensity steady cardio, you will be actually using those fatty acids. So combine, your high intensity interval training and your low intensity steady cardio after that immediately and you, this is the best possible scenario for fat loss. So um, I hope you liked the video, if you did please uh, uh, subscribe to my channel and um, I will see you in the next video.